welcome. Hi, thanks. Thanks for the introduction. I am Saurav. I'll talk about scalable distributed randomness beacon. This is a joint work with Vineet, Irene, and my advisor, Ling. So let's get started. So a randomness beacon is a, can be defined as this ideal functionality that has a clock in it. And what, it, what this functionality does, it outputs fresh random string to the clients after every certain time interval. This is how it will look. And in distributed randomness beacon, we want to replace this ideal functionality with a distributed protocol so that we get fault tolerance and all, all those kind of things. We can formalize the properties that we want as we want unpredictability that says the future random output should be unpredictable to the adversary even if it corrupts a fraction of the nodes. The beacon output should be bias resistant so, such that the output should be uniformly random and the protocol should always produce fresh outputs and the output should be publicly verifiable by any other users who, was no, who is not part of the beacon generation protocol. So why do we need randomness beacon? This has many applications in consensus and blockchain protocols. It has applications in auditable auctions and also lottery, uh, anonymous communication, bootstrapping, cryptographic protocols, etc. So this is our system model. We work in partially synchronous network. That means networks which are sometimes synchronous, sometimes asynchronous. That's one way of thinking about it. We operate in n equal to 3t plus 1, where n is the total number of nodes, and t is the maximum number of faulty nodes. We also only require a transparent system or a common random string, and we only assume public key infrastructure. This is the, this has, the randomness beacon has been looked in for a while, and it has a lot of work, so we only summarize few of those. So here we only look at CKS05, which is an asynchronous randomness beacon protocol that has lots of good properties, like optimal fault tolerance, has communication cost of kappa and square, where kappa is the security parameter. But the downside of this protocol is that this requires a trusted setup. We have other protocols such as Scrape, which, also, which are in synchrony, but they have very high communication cost. We have Hydrant that that has a better communication cost, but it gives up on unpredictability property. Very decent work, Beard and Piper also achieves randomness beacon, but they have high communication cost as well. So what, this is our result. So in this paper, we give a partially synchronous distributed randomness beacon that, that, is, uh, that tolerates up to one third failure and has communication cost of kappa n square and communication cost of order n. So this matches in terms of performance, the CKS05, uh, but uh, and only requires a uh, common random string and public key infrastructure. There are four key techniques that gives us our result. One is a new publicly verifiable secret sharing scheme. The second is a new aggregation verification mechanism. Third is something we call uh, simultaneous decision state machine replication. And fourth is a two-round two, a two -round beacon output reconstruction protocol. I'll briefly touch upon these things. But before I start, I want to give some brief background on the tools I use. One of the tools I, I use in this paper is called threshold secret sharing. I'm sure many of you are already familiar with this, but let, let's just recap briefly. So this is a protocol to secret share a secret Z among N nodes, such that any subset of T plus one or more nodes can recover the secret or use the secret to do something, but a, t, a subset of T or less than less nodes cannot learn anything about the secret. So. Pictorially, this is what it looks like. We have a dealer that has a secret Z, and then it wants to share a secret so that everybody outputs a share Z1, Z2, Z3, up to Z5. So one of the classic example of threshold secret sharing is the Shamir secret sharing, where you embed the secret into a polynomial evaluation at zero, where the rest of the coefficients of the polynomials are random, and the share of each party is a evaluation point. And it's easy to see that if you pick a degree t polynomial, then any t plus one or more points will uniquely define the polynomial and you can get recover the secret. So in this paper, we need something stronger, which we call, which is known as verifiable secret sharing, where the idea is we want to do threshold secret sharing in a setting where the dealer could be malicious and also a subset of nodes could be malicious as well. We need slightly stronger primitive, which we call publicly verifiable secret sharing scheme, which is verifiable secret sharing scheme with some extra stuffs. So this is what it looks like. This is what we want. And 
I just want to describe what pvss is. So pvss has this function, locally computable function, which is pvss.share, which takes in a random secret, and it outputs three things, three vectors. The first vector is a commitment vector, second is encryption vector, and the third is proof vector, which, which are non-interactive uh, zero-knowledge proofs, such that if the dealer broadcasts the, this three tuple, v, c, and pi, then everybody can check that the dealer did the very, uh, PVSS sharing correctly, and each party can also locally recover their secret. So we'll use PVSS in our uh, construction. Another tool we need is state machine replication. So this is, uh, you can think of this as blockchains. That's the modern uh, name of state, man, state machine replication. So it is analogous to a partially synchronous broadcast protocol. There are some subtle differences, but you can think of that as a, like a broadcast protocol in partial synchronous setting. So we will only review the epoch-based state machine replication protocol where each, every epoch has a leader. So I have a brief, I'll briefly review what, how SMRs typically work. So we have four nodes where the first node is the leader and let's say fourth node is a malicious node. Then in each epoch, let's say the ith epoch, the leader will propose a new block, bi, and then the nodes will participate in some kind of voting. This voting could be multiple rounds as well, such that at the end of this voting round, everybody decides that let's accept this block and they append this block to the ledger. Then we move on to the next epoch, where we have a different leader, which will propose a new block, bi plus one, and then we do the same thing again. We do another round of voting, and then we agree on the new block. So these are the tools we'll use, and we have some other tools as, as well that we use in our uh, paper. So one property that we need from SMR, we need a simultaneous decision SMR. That, that means that if one honest node outputs, then everybody outputs almost immediately. So we need this simultaneous decision property for unpredictability. The intuition is that we don't want the adversary to learn the beacon output too far ahead of honest nodes. We want to ensure that as soon as adversary learns the beacon output, then everybody else also learns almost immediately. Let's look at how we construct our protocol. So, the, so we, as in SMR, we also run in epochs. Every epoch has a leader, and we ensure that whenever the epoch's leader is honest, we produce a beacon output. Each of our epoch has four phases, commitment phase, aggregation phase, agreement phase, and reconstruction phase. I'll now bl briefly look at all of these phases. So the, on top, I have the legends that I'll be using for my figure. In the sharing phase, let's say we have four nodes, and the second node is the leader. What each node does, it no each node samples a random secret and computes the PVSS transcript of the random secret sample by the node. Every node does this locally. And then these nodes will send this PVSS transcript to the leader. This is the sharing phase. During the aggregation phase, the leader will aggregate these uh, shares using the additive homomorphic property of the PVSS commitment and also the PVSS encryptions. During the agreement phase, the leader will send this aggregated commitment and aggregated ciphertext using a simultaneous decision SMR. When the, here, there is one issue, the PVSS proofs are not aggregatable. So th there is a subtlety here. So how do we ensure that the leader indeed did the aggregation correctly? So for this, we have a new distributed aggregation verification mechanism where every node only checks a part of the aggregation uh, mechanism and they collectively ensure that the global aggregation was done correctly. And this is very crucial for our uh, random beacon protocol. There is another issue, which is a subtlety in like uh, most of the SMR protocols where it is possible that if the leader is bad, then it is possible that some honest node do not output the value. They will know that the decision has been reached, but they won't have the value locally. And we address this by using a two round reconstruction protocol, which ensures that even if this kind of situation arise, the random beacon protocol still ensures unpredictability and the remaining properties. So at the end, at the end of the reconstruction phase, the nodes will output a common beacon output. So this is our construction. We have some optimizations in, for, in our paper where we amortize the leader's work. In our protocol, each node becomes leader only once in an epoch. So and so that we just 
make sure that the node does the commitment and aggregation phase a priori so that we can uh, pipeline the entire system. We also use multi-exponentiation wherever possible for computation optimization. Let's look at our implementation details. We implement our protocol using Golang atop this Quorum code base, which implements a, a SMR protocol. We change the SMR protocol to re-implement a variant of hot stuff, uh, SMR protocol, a popular SMR protocol. And we use, in our protocol, BLS12381 elliptic curve from Gra Gnar crypto library, and we also use their native multi-exponentiation protocol. In terms of experiments, we evaluate our system using AWS across eight regions. We position one node per VM and we test with up to 128 nodes. So let's look at our evaluation results. So first we want to look at the average number of beacons output per node. How, how fast is the system? How, how often can the system generate beacon outputs? And here if you look at with 64 nodes, our protocol can output about 40 beacons per minute, which is about one beacon every one and a half second. And in comparison, we compared with DRAN, which is a variant of the CKS protocol. Recall this CKS05 requires trusted setup, and variance DRAND is a synchronous variant of it. So even with one stronger assumption, our performance is slightly better than DRAND. We believe this is because of their use of inefficient broadcast channel and also some other implementation issues. We also compare with Hydrant, which has one of the implementation. Hydrant has some unpredictability issue, and we and ours is perfectly untreatable, and we also still perform much better than the, th these works. We also measure the bandwidth uses, and we see with 64 nodes, with spurt, each node per, per, per beacon, each node has to send about 60 kilobytes of data. This is, for larger nodes, this is still slightly more, but there is some scopes to imp scope to improve here as well. So in summary, we present a distributed randomness beacon protocol, which, is, which only requires transparent setup. It is partially synchronous, can tolerate up to one third malicious failures, and it has order n computation amortized per beacon output, and lambda n square communication cost as, uh, per beacon output. And our average latency is order one rounds, but in the worst case, it's possible that we, uh, we do not produce any beacon for f rounds. So there are lots of open problems. One of the open problem is to design an asynchronous randomness beacon protocol that tolerates the same number of failures and also reduce this computation cost and communication cost to worst case lambda n square instead of amortized and also reduce the worst case latency to order one rounds and also we don't know of any lower bound results and it's, it's, I think it's interesting to work on uh, what, what will be lower bound results on randomness beacon protocols. That's it for this talk, and these are my amazing co collaborators. Okay, thanks a lot for this uh, nice overview, and we have time for some questions. And yeah, please state your name and affiliation. Hey, this is Joachim from Stanford. Um, maybe you mentioned this, uh, and I missed it. What PVSS uh, scheme are you using? So. We, we looked at Scrape PVSS, and then while working on it, we have some improvements on top of PV, PVSS, the Scrape PVSS scheme. Basically, we can improve the underlying assumption that they assume, and we have our new PVSS scheme, but which is very similar in principle with the Scrape PVSS scheme. Okay, uh, one question from my side. Uh, in the evaluation, you only had to de rent up to 32 nodes. Is there a conceptual problem why it doesn't scale to 64 or 128 nodes? No, we, we just couldn't get it running with 64 nodes. We tried hard. And probably they're because they use a very naive broadcast protocol, which is n to the fourth. And as we scale with large number of nodes, the latencies, they are very synchronous protocols. They have to make strong assumptions about a network latency. So if those assumptions are violated, the protocol doesn't produce the output and throws all sorts of errors. But we just couldn't get it running, but there is no conceptual error with that, yeah. Okay, not, uh, no conceptual, but still practical. It's practical, uh, specific to probably that implementation, yeah. Okay, more questions from the audience or online? Yeah, sure. Um, can you clarify the property of the SMR protocol where you mentioned nodes output at the same time? 
Yeah, um, so if it is partially synchronous, then um, how would they like during a period of like partial synchrony before G GST? How would they operate at the same time? So th that's that's a very good question. So how we measure this uh, simultaneous decision in terms of number of rounds? So it's possible that one of the round is much longer than adversary learns the beacon output now, and adversary deliberately delays the next round to be like a like say one year. Then the nodes will out other nodes will output the beacon output after a year, but if we look at number of rounds, like where the round is basically the latency of the messages, so we ensure that if adverse, if one node decides, then the other nodes can decide within two message delays. And that's like constant number of message delays. And yes, in partial synchrony, each delay could be much longer, but we, we, we believe in practice, like delays will be very reasonable, yes. Thank you. Okay, so if there are no more questions, let's thank the speaker one more time.